Hello, and thank you for taking a moment to watch this training. On this specific video, we're going to continue configuring the foam burner install in our Salesforce environment. And more specifically, we're going to talk about the disposition buttons. These buttons across the bottom of the screen that you and your organization will see as you're making calls using the foam burner platform. They are super easy to configure. And so let's go ahead and jump into this. I'm going to go ahead and end this dial session. And within our foam burner account, we're going to click on the gear in the upper right hand corner and we're going to go to dial session settings. In the dial session settings over on the left hand side, we're going to click on dispositions. Now in this training, I do want to point out that I'm not going to go super into depth on the disposition or button training. I have some pre-created training that you can watch. So right here, watch this video. If it's been closed, you can access it here. I'm going to go ahead and close it on this account. So I'm going to give you a quick little overview and I'm going to rely on you to dig into the deeper training that's available. But what I'm going to point out are a few of the most important things that you need to consider when you're configuring your dispositions. The first thing I want to point out is the dialing set and live answer sets are two types of buttons. The dialing set is a group of buttons that show up at the start of every call. These are buttons like voicemail, no answer, busy signal. Well, the live answer set is a different type of button that only shows up after you complete a live call. Things like interested, not interested, set appointment, jump off a cliff, things like that, right? And you can edit the buttons that make up each of those sets. So let's take, for example, the dialing set. If we edit this, you'll see all of the buttons that make up the dialing set, such as voicemail, no answer, busy signal, bad number, fax machine, and new for whatever reason. So these are the buttons that make up the dialing set. When you're configuring these buttons, there's a couple of things that you want to consider. So I'm going to go ahead and just edit the voicemail button. The first thing and what I consider the most important thing that you need to consider when you're editing these buttons is the call status. This information, what you put in this box is what flows back to Salesforce in the activities that are created when the disposition or button is clicked during a dial session. So it's very important that you pay attention to this because that's what shows up back in Salesforce. And that's what you're going to be triggering processes on within Process Builder. And we'll be getting into that as well. The other thing you need to consider is whether or not you're going to have these, e these buttons trigger emails. Every button in Phone Burner can trigger an email. They don't have to trigger an email, but they all can. And we'll be talking about how you can create emails. We'll talk about how you can make sure that those emails show up in Salesforce. But just know that when you're configuring your dispositions, you can actually assign specific emails to specific buttons. It doesn't have to be the same email on every button. Now let's take a quick peek at the live answer set. Like I said, the live answer set is a set of buttons that only show up after a live call. Things like interested, not interested, and so on and so forth. Once again, the status, if we edit this button, this status is the most important piece of this disposition as far as it pertains to Salesforce because this is what's flowing back to Salesforce as part of the activity. It goes into the subject line. It goes into the details of that activity. And just like I showed you on the other buttons, every button can be configured to send an email. Now, one other thing that I want to talk about before we wrap up this brief overview of the disposition or button settings is this next action. If you watch the video where we talked about configuring the default or primary phone number and additional phone numbers to be called, you may remember that if there are contacts with multiple phone numbers, you want to take into account the call outcome of the current call to determine whether or not you want to call any additional phone numbers, right? So for example, if I call somebody and they are interested, when I click that interested button, I may want to move on to the next contact as opposed to calling the next number associated with that contact. It'd be kind of weird if you call Sally on her mobile phone, she answers the phone, she's interested, and then you call her on her home phone. It'd be kind of weird, right? So when you know a specific call outcome doesn't require any additional calls to that contact, you can just set it up to call the next contact. Whereas things like, let's go back to our dialing set, 
Whereas things like, uh, let's say, voicemail, you're going to want to potentially call the next phone number, right? If they've got three phone numbers, we call the first phone number and it goes to voicemail. Let's call the next number. Let's see if we can catch them at the next number on that record. Once again, call status, very important. One touch email is important if you're planning on sending emails through phone burner while making calls. And then of course, next action is very important if you have contacts with multiple phone numbers and you wanna take into consideration each call outcome when deciding what you would do with each of those. And of course, there's more detailed training on how you might wanna configure these dispositions within the system. But on this particular training, I wanted to give you just a quick little overview of the dispositions or the button configuration within PhoneBurner to work with your Salesforce integration. And thank you again for watching this video. Happy dialing.